Chapter 1 Gateshead Hall Jane Eyre was an orphan. She lived with her aunt, Mrs. Reed, at Gateshead Hall in the north of England. Mrs. Reed and her children, John and Eliza, were cruel to Jane. One cold winter afternoon, they were in the sitting room. Look, Mama, here is Jane. I am not pleased with your behaviour, Jane. I don't want you here with my children. But what have I done, Aunt? Don't ask questions. Just get out. Jane went to the library and took down a book. Why do they hate me? Everything I do is wrong. After a few minutes, John came in. Jane was afraid. He was bigger than her, and he was a bully. What are you doing? I'm reading. He hit her in the face. These are our books, and you have no right to touch them. You're only an orphan. You shouldn't live with gentlemen's children. You should beg in the street. He threw the book at her. You wicked boy! What did you say? I'm going to tell Mama about you. He tried to hit her again. But now she wasn't afraid. She pulled his hair. Ow! You hurt me! Mrs. Reed came in with Bessie, the servant. Jane, what are you doing attacking Master John? Take her to the Red Room and lock her in there. Jane's uncle, Mr. Reed, died in the Red Room. After that, nobody used it. I'm afraid of this room, Bessie. Don't leave me here. You have to learn to behave yourself properly. Alone in the dark room, Jane thought about her unhappy life. They all hate me. They don't want me here. My uncle was kind to me, but now he's dead. And he died in here. Suddenly, a strange light flashed across the room. Jane was terrified. What's that? Help! Bessie, let me out! What's wrong, Jane? Are you ill? Please put me in another room. I'm so afraid in here. Then Mrs. Reed came in. What is all this noise? Please forgive me, Aunt. Punish me some other way. Silence! Now you will stay in here even longer. I'll teach you to control your violent temper. The door was locked again, but this time Jane fainted from fear. When she woke up, she was in bed, and the doctor was looking down at her. She knew that he was a kind man. Are you all right? What happened to you? Oh, Dr. Lloyd, I'm so unhappy here. I see. I'll speak to your aunt. Perhaps you could go away to school. Yes, I think I would like that. Chapter 2 Lowood School Bessie was the only person who was kind to Jane. Tell me about my parents, Bessie. Your mother was Mr. Reed's sister. The Reeds were a rich family, and they didn't want her to marry your father. He was just a poor clergyman. Then your father died, and your mother too, soon after you were born. You had nobody, and your uncle brought you here to live. Poor Jane. It's a sad story. One morning, Bessie came into Jane's room. Jane, hurry! Mrs. Reed wants you in the sitting room immediately. Jane hurried downstairs and went nervously into the room. What can she want with me? A tall, frightening man was standing next to Mrs. Reed. This is the girl I was telling you about, Mr. Brocklehurst. Her size is small. Um, what is her age? Ten. Hmm. What is your name, little girl? Jane Eyre, sir. Come here, Jane Eyre. Do you know what happens to the wicked? Are you a good child? Indeed she is not. She is a deceitful girl. I would like you to keep a special eye on her. Very well, Mrs. Reed. 
I will tell Miss Temple that she can expect a new pupil at Lowood School. A few days later, early in the morning, Jane took the coach to begin her new life at Lowood. Only Bessie got up to see her go. Goodbye, Bessie. Goodbye, Jane. Take care of her, coachman. That night, the coach arrived at the school. Is there a girl called Jane Eyre? Yes. Come with me. A young woman was waiting for Jane inside the school. Hello, Jane. My name is Miss Temple. I'm the head teacher at Lowood. Good evening, Miss Temple. You're very young to travel alone. You must be tired and hungry after your journey. Miss Miller, give Jane some supper before she goes to bed. Yes, Miss Temple. Miss Miller took Jane to a large room full of girls, all dressed in the same dark, ugly clothes. Silence, girls! Fetch the supper trays. Here is your food, Jane. It's only bread and water, I'm afraid. That's all we have in the evening. Thank you. After supper, the girls moved upstairs to an icy cold room full of beds. This is the dormitory, and here is your bed. Good night. I hope you sleep well. Good night. During the night, Jane whispered to the girl in the next bed. It's so cold here. Yes. You can feel the wind coming in through the wall. It was still dark when a bell rang for everybody to get up. Oh no! The water is all frozen. We can't wash this morning. The girls went down to the dining room for breakfast. Ugh! The porridge is burnt. I'm starving with hunger, but I can't eat this. Miss Temple came in. Girls. I am sorry about your breakfast. I will make sure that you have a good lunch of bread and cheese. Chapter Three. Mr. Brocklehurst. The girls had lessons all morning. After lunch, they went out into the garden. Jane heard one of the girls coughing. <coughs> Are you all right? <coughs> yes, it's nothing. Just a cough. I'm Jane. What's your name? Helen. Helen Burns. Are you an orphan? Yes. Nearly all the girls here are orphans. This is a charity school. Is it Miss Temple's school? No, unfortunately. She's very kind, but she's only the head teacher. The school belongs to Mr. Brocklehurst. He buys our food and clothes, but he doesn't come here very often. In the afternoon, there was a history lesson. The teacher, Miss Scratchard, did not like Helen. Burns, you are a dirty girl. You haven't washed your hands and face today. Bring me the rod. Helen went to the cupboard, and returned with the rod. Miss Scratchard took it and hit her with it. When will you learn to do what you are told? The other girls watched in silence. After the lesson. Jane saw that there were tears in Helen's eyes. It wasn't fair. Nobody could wash this morning. Why didn't you tell her? It doesn't matter, Jane. One morning, some weeks later, there were excited whispers in the classroom. Mr. Brocklehurst is in the school. He's coming in here. Jane felt afraid as Mr. Brocklehurst entered the room with Miss Temple. The cook has informed me that a lunch of bread and cheese was served three weeks ago. Yes, I ordered it. The girls were all hungry. They had only burnt porridge for breakfast. Madam, these girls must not be accustomed to luxuries. They must learn to suffer and be patient. It is good for their immortal souls. Suddenly. He pointed to one of the girls. Miss Temple, what is the meaning of this? That girl has curls in her hair. Curls. But that is her natural hair. Natural? That hair must be cut off. These girls are here to learn modesty, not vanity. Jane wanted to hide at the back of the class, but to her horror, she dropped her book. 
Who is that careless girl? Ah, it's you, Jane Eyre. Come here and stand on this stool. I have something to say about you. Look at this child, everybody. She seems innocent, but her kind aunt has told me about her true character, and I want to warn you all: she is a deceitful liar. Stay there on the stool. Nobody must speak to her for the rest of the day. That evening, Helen found Jane crying. <laughs> What he said about me isn't true. <laughs> But now everybody will dislike me. Don't worry, Jane. We are all sorry for you. Nobody believes what he said. Chapter Four. Jane leaves Lowood. As the winter changed to spring, <coughs> Helen's cough became worse. <coughs> Helen, why don't you go and see Miss Temple? It's not just me. Half the girls in the school are sick. Illness passed from girl to girl. Jane was worried about her friend. You will never get better here. Our clothes are too thin, and we are always cold and hungry. Some of the girls died. They were buried in a graveyard nearby. Miss Temple tried to take care of Helen. You can sleep in my room, Helen. You'll be warmer there. One day. Jane saw a carriage leaving the school. That's the doctor. I wonder if he has been to see Helen. That night, Jane secretly went to Miss Temple's room. Helen, are are you awake? Jane, is that you? What are you doing here? I couldn't sleep. I had to see you. You have come to say goodbye. You are probably just in time. Jane did not realize. That Helen was dying. Are you going somewhere? Are you going home? I'm going to my last home. I'm going to God. Jane lay on the bed, and put her arms around her friend. Don't be sad, Jane. We will meet again in heaven. She kissed Helen, and after a while fell asleep. When she woke up the next morning, Miss Temple was there. Where's Helen? She's at peace now, Jane. She died during the night. After the deaths of Helen and the other girls, there was a public investigation of Lowood School. Mister Brocklehurst, we have found that the food, clothing, and accommodation for the girls are not satisfactory. We are going to appoint an inspector to supervise the school. Mister Brocklehurst was humiliated. But conditions at the school improved. Jane stayed there for eight years. During her last two years, she worked as a teacher. She was now a young woman, and Miss Temple was one of her friends. One day, Jane, I have some important news to tell you. I'm going to get married. Congratulations! I'm so happy for you. It means that I will leave Lowood. I will have to move to another part of the country. I will miss you. The place will not be the same without you. Jane decided that it was time for her to leave the school too. I haven't been away from Lowood since the day I arrived. I would like to see a little more of the world. She put an advertisement in the paper. Young lady with teaching experience wishes to find work in a family. With children under fourteen, she is qualified to teach English, French, drawing and music. Please reply to J E, the Post Office, Lowood. There. Now let's see if anybody wants to give me a job. A week later, Jane called into the post office. Excuse me, are there any letters for J E? Yes, there's just one. Here you are. Jane returned to her room, and opened the letter. If you provide satisfactory references, I can offer you a position as a governess teaching one girl aged nine. The salary will be thirty pounds per year. 
Please reply to Mrs. Fairfax, Thornfield Hall, near Milcote. That sounds perfect for me. I know Miss Temple will give me a good reference. A few weeks later, Jane packed her things, and finally said goodbye to Lowood. Chapter Five, Thornfield Hall. Jane felt a little nervous as she arrived at Thornfield Hall. The house is beautiful. I wonder what the family are like. Mrs. Fairfax was very friendly. Come in and sit down, my dear. You must be tired after your journey. Would you like a cup of tea? Yes, please. That's very kind of you. She introduced Jane to the little girl. This is Adele, your new pupil. Hello, Adele. I'm very pleased to meet you. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. Adele is French. She's an orphan. Mr. Rochester has adopted her and brought her here to England. Mr. Rochester, but isn't Adele your granddaughter? Oh no, I'm only the housekeeper here. The house belongs to Mr. Rochester. Does Mrs. Rochester live here? No, my dear. Mr. Rochester isn't married. He's not here at the moment. He spends long periods away, travelling abroad. Come with me. I'll show you around the house. It was a large house with many rooms. This is your bedroom. I hope you like it. It's a lovely room. I feel at home here already. There was a disturbing noise from somewhere upstairs in the attic. <laughs> What's that? It, it sounds like laughter.、Uh, oh, it's nothing. It's probably Grace Poole, one of the servants who lives upstairs. She's a little strange. A door opened in the hall, and a woman appeared. There she is, Grace. Don't make so much noise, please. Yes, ma'am. Jane was happy at Thornfield. She enjoyed teaching Adele. I have written something for you. Very good, Adele. Your English is getting better. One winter evening, Mrs. Fairfax called Jane. Will you post this letter for me in the village? Yes, of course. On the road, she heard a horse approaching. Suddenly, a large dog ran past her, followed by a rider. There was ice on the road. The horse slipped and fell. Oh no! Are you all right? Yes, yes. Stand back from the horse. The man seemed to be annoyed. He managed to stand up. You have hurt your foot. Let me help you. All、oh, right, if you can help me to the horse. Who are you? Where do you live? At Thornfield Hall, I am the new governess. Ah, the governess. And who is the owner of Thornfield Hall? Mr. Rochester. But I have never met him. The horseman turned in the direction of Thornfield. Well, hurry home. It is late for you to be out on the road. Jane wondered who the man was. When she returned to the house, she had a surprise. There is the same dog. Now I know who he is. It must be Mr. Rochester himself. What a strange man! Chapter Six: The Fire. That evening, Mrs. Fairfax came to Jane's room. Mr. Rochester wants to see you. He's in the sitting room. Don't be upset if he seems rude. That's just his way. You must try to understand him. I know he is a little strange, but I am not offended by him. He has had a difficult life. For years, his father and his older brother didn't speak to him. He lived in the West Indies. He didn't return to Thornfield until after his brother died nine years ago. Jane went with Mrs. Fairfax into the sitting room. At first. Rochester did not look at them. Miss Eyre is here, sir. Let us sit down. I would like some tea, Mrs. Fairfax. After some minutes of silence, 
He began to ask Jane questions. Who are your parents, Miss Eyre? I have none, sir. I am an orphan. What school did you go to? Lowood School. Ah, Mr. Brocklehurst's charity school. And did you like the good Mr. Brocklehurst? No, I, I did not. He was cruel to us. The interrogation continued. When Jane said she liked art, he asked to see her drawings. I suppose your teacher helped you with these. No, sir. They are my own work. Suddenly, Rochester turned to Jane. Do you think I am handsome? Jane was confused. She answered without thinking. No, no sir. <laughs> I admire honesty, Miss Eyre. During the following weeks, Jane met Rochester frequently. He always seemed pleased to see her, and she was happy to see him. One night, there was a noise outside Jane's door. She woke up. What was that? I I can hear footsteps. She got up and opened the door. There's nobody here. But what is that smell? It's smoke, and it's coming from Mr. Rochester's room. She ran to the room and opened the door. Rochester was asleep, but the room was on fire. Wake up! Wake up! Fire! There was a bowl of water on the table. Jane threw it over the bed. Rochester finally woke up. Jane, what's happening? Someone started a fire in here. They're trying to kill you. They managed to put out the fire. How did you wake up? Did you hear something? Yes, there was someone laughing in the hall. I think it was Grace Paul. Wait here. I'll be back in a moment. She heard his footsteps going upstairs. After a few minutes, he returned. It's all right now. She won't come down again. Jane, please don't tell anyone about this. I don't want to frighten people. Yes, sir. He took her hand and looked at her. There was great emotion in his voice. My dear Jane, thank you. You saved my life. I knew that you would do me good the moment I first met you. I saw it in your eyes. You are cold. You must go back to bed. Good night, Mr. Rochester. Chapter Seven. Blanche Ingram. Jane returned to her room, but she could not sleep. She felt a strong attraction for Rochester. Does he feel something for me? He spoke to me so strangely, and held my hand. No, it's not possible. I'm just a governess, no more than a servant. I am neither rich nor beautiful. He cannot be interested in me. She also wondered about Grace Poole. Why did she set fire to his room, and why does he let her stay here, if she's so dangerous? The next morning, she was surprised to see Grace Poole cleaning Rochester's room. She pretended that she knew nothing. Good morning, Mrs. Poole. What happened here? It seems the master had an accident with a candle. Did you hear anything during the night? I heard nothing, Miss. Mrs. Fairfax had some news for Jane. Mr. Rochester has good weather for his journey. His journey? Has he gone away? Yes, he has gone to visit some friends. He will be away for at least a week. Does he often go away like this? Oh yes, he is a very popular gentleman, especially with the ladies. In fact. Everybody expects that he will soon get married to one of them. Jane's heart sank. Who is she? Her name is Blanche Ingram, and she is from a rich aristocratic family. I saw her once. She is a very beautiful young woman. That evening, Jane looked at herself in the mirror. I am a fool. How could I imagine that Mr. Rochester was interested in me? Some days later, Mrs. Fairfax received a letter. It's from Mr. Rochester. He says that he will arrive here on Thursday with a group of important guests, 
So, Jane, you will see Miss Ingram. All the servants were busy over the following days, preparing the house for the guests. Jane helped in the kitchen. On Thursday, Jane and Adele watched the carriages arrive. The little girl was very excited. Look at all the beautiful dresses. Who is that lady next to Mr. Rochester? She must be Blanche Ingram. Mrs. Fairfax had a message for Jane. Mr. Rochester wants you to come with Adele to the reception in the evening. Do I have to? I'd prefer to stay in my room. He insists on it. That evening, Jane put on her best dress and sat in the drawing room with Adele. Most of the guests ignored her completely. Blanche Ingram was sophisticated and beautiful. She was also arrogant. Where did you find that little French girl, Edward? I thought you didn't like children. I adopted her when she was abandoned. I knew her mother. I have a governess to look after her. Oh, I had dozens of governesses when I was a little girl. They were all such ridiculous creatures. Blanche seemed to be very friendly with Rochester. They even sang a duet together. Jane quietly left the room, but Rochester followed her. What is the matter? You look depressed. No, I am just tired. I want to go to bed. He looked at her for a few moments. Don't be sad, Jane. Good night. Chapter Eight. Mister Mason. One evening, when the guests were still at Thornfield, a stranger arrived. Good evening. My name is Richard Mason. I have come to see Mr. Rochester. I hope this is not an inconvenient time. I have travelled a long way. Come in, Mr. Mason. Jane, will you tell Mr. Rochester that he has a visitor? Rochester was in the library. There is a Mr. Mason to see you, sir. Rochester turned pale and sat down. What, Mason? All the way from the West Indies? Are you ill, sir? Oh, Jane, my little friend, I wish that I was on an island with only you, and all my troubles were far away. Bring Mason here. That night, there was a terrible cry from upstairs in the attic. <coughs> help! Help, Rochester! Jane rushed out into the hall. All the guests were there. What happened? What was that shout? The door from the stairs opened, and Rochester appeared. It's all right, everybody. There's no need for alarm. One of the servants had a nightmare, but now she has calmed down. You can go back to your beds. The guests returned to their rooms. After a few minutes, Jane heard a knock on the door. Are you awake, Jane? Yes. I need your help. Come with me, and don't make a sound. He took Jane upstairs to the attic, and unlocked a door. Are you afraid of blood? No, sir. They entered a dark bedroom. There was a body on the bed, covered in blood. Who is that? It's Mason. It's all right. He's not dead. Rochester went to the next room. Stay here, Jane. She heard the sound of laughter. <coughs> After a few moments, he returned. And locked the door. Rochester touched Mason's face, and he opened his eyes. Am I going to die? No, don't worry. I'm going to get the doctor. Jane, I want you to stay with him until I return, but don't speak to him. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Jane remained alone with the wounded man. She felt afraid. Is that Grace Paul in the next room? Why does he keep her here? What is his secret? At dawn, Rochester came back with the village doctor. We must hurry, doctor. Will he be able to travel? Yes, he has lost a lot of blood, but he'll be all right. I only wanted to help, but she attacked me with a knife. Then she bit me like an animal. 
I warned you. I told you she was dangerous. Now you must go, Richard, before anybody sees you in this condition. Try to forget it. I cannot. Take care of her, Edward. Treat her gently. I have done my best. I wish it would come to an end. After Mason left with the doctor, Rochester turned to Jane. I cannot explain all this. A long time ago in a faraway land, I made a terrible mistake, and the consequences have followed me all my life. Chapter 9 The Night Visitor During the following weeks, Jane was upset by the preparations for the wedding between Rochester and Miss Ingram. I cannot believe that he loves her. He will never be happy with a woman like her. She saw him often and felt more and more in love with him. I cannot continue living like this. If he marries Blanche Ingram, I will have to leave Thornfield. One evening she was in the garden when he called her. Jane, come and see this butterfly. He is so big and colourful. He reminds me of insects I saw in Jamaica. Thornfield is a beautiful place in summer. Will you be sorry to leave it? Yes, I will. I love Thornfield. I have been happy here. And I have known you. It will hurt me to go away. But why must you leave? Because you are going to marry Miss Ingram. Do you think I can stay here after that? Listen to me. You must stay. Yes, I am going to marry, but not Miss Ingram. I do not love her, and she has no love for me. It is you that I love. Me? Are you serious? Say that you will be my wife. Use my name. Say, Edward, I will marry you. Do you really love me? You know that I do. Then yes, Edward, I will marry you. He took her in his arms and kissed her. God forgive me. I will have you as my wife. Nobody can stop me. Mrs. Fairfax was shocked when she heard the news. Is it really true that Mr. Rochester has asked you to marry him? Yes, it's true. I am so surprised. I don't know what to say. The days passed quickly as Jane prepared for the wedding. Rochester took her to Millcott to buy a dress. You will have roses in your hair and the most expensive veil we can find. <laughs> you will not recognize me. For our honeymoon, we will, we will stay in Paris, Rome and Venice. I want to revisit all these places with you, Jane. She was excited as she packed her things ready for the journey. The label says, Mrs. Jane Rochester, can it be true? The night before the wedding... Jane woke up from a disturbing dream. A woman was in her room. Who's there? Mrs. Fairfax? Is that you? Jane watched in silent terror as the woman moved to the wardrobe and put on her veil. Then she tore it angrily and threw it on the floor. The woman turned and stared at Jane. Then she blew out the candle and left. Who is she? It is just a nightmare. Jane looked down at the floor. No, it's not my imagination. There is my veil and it's torn in two. Chapter 10 The Wedding Finally, the wedding day arrived. Rochester was agitated and impatient. Is the carriage ready? We want to leave immediately after the service. Yes, sir. He walked with Jane to the village church. Let's hurry, Jane. I can't wait for the end of this ceremony. There were no guests. But two men were standing at the back of the church. Who are those men, Edward? I don't know. I didn't see their faces. The priest began the wedding service. If anybody knows of any reason why 
this man and this woman cannot be joined in matrimony, speak now. Suddenly, one of the strangers came forward. Stop! This marriage cannot go on! There is an impediment! What is the impediment? Mr. Rochester is already married! Jane's heart stopped. Rochester turned pale and held her tight. Who are you? My name is Briggs, and I am a lawyer for the Mason family. I have here a document which proves that you, Edward Rochester, married Bertha Mason in Spanish Town, Jamaica, on October the 20th, 15 years ago. But you cannot prove that she is still alive. The other stranger stepped forward. It was Richard Mason. She is living at Thornfield Hall. I saw her there last April. I am her brother. The priest interrupted. That's impossible. I have lived here for years, and I have never heard of a Mrs. Rochester at Thornfield Hall. Enough! It is true. I am already married. Come with me, all of you, and I will show you my wife. Rochester led the group from the church back to Thornfield Hall. The servants were waiting for them. Congratulations, sir! Away with your congratulations. They are fifteen years too late. There will be no wedding today. He ran up the stairs to the attic and unlocked the doors. Follow me. They entered a room where Grace Poole was sitting. Good morning, Mrs. Poole. And how is your patient today? Oh, reasonably well, sir. In the corner, there was a woman on the floor, growling like an animal. (gasps) Take care, sir. She has seen you. Everybody was shocked. Jane recognised her. She was the woman with the candle in her bedroom. Suddenly, the woman laughed and jumped at Rochester. He held her and pushed her down onto a chair. This is my wife, and this is how my marriage has been for 15 years. She went mad after we were married. Her mother was mad, too. But nobody told me that there was madness in the family. I have done everything that I can, but there is no cure. Nothing can change her. My life with her has been a torture. He looked at Jane. Now can you understand why I wanted to marry Jane? I know it was wrong, but finally I have found the woman I love. Please go now and leave me alone. Chapter 11 Rochester's Story Jane locked herself in her room. She was in despair. What am I going to do now? One thing I know, I must leave Thornfield even though it will break my heart. Late in the afternoon, she came out. Rochester was there, waiting for her. Jane, will you ever forgive me? I lied to you, I know, but I never wanted to hurt you. I am tired and sick. I need something to drink. He carried her into a room. Here is some wine. Do you feel better now? Yes. I want you to listen to me. Then I hope you will understand. When my father and my brother were alive, they were only interested in money. My father wanted to leave all his property to my brother and to find a rich wife for me. He had an old friend in Jamaica, a rich merchant called Mason, who had a daughter. So he sent me away to meet this girl. I was very young and innocent. I knew nothing about his plans, and Bertha was beautiful. I thought we were in love, and before I realized what was happening, we were married. I never met Bertha's mother. I thought she was dead. But then I found out that she was mad and that the illness ran in the family. My father and my brother knew all about it, but they told me nothing. My marriage was unbearable. 
Bertha did terrible things, and she became worse as the years passed. I tried to help her, but there was nothing I could do. When my brother died, I decided to return to Thornfield. Nobody in England knew that I was married. I put my wife in the room in the attic and paid Grace Poole to look after her. Only she and the doctor knew my secret. For years I travelled all over Europe, trying to forget. But I was always unhappy until the day I was riding back to Thornfield and I met you. Rochester looked into Jane's eyes. I wanted to tell you all this before, but I was afraid of losing you. I love you, Jane. I need you. I know. And I love you. But what can we do now? Come with me. Everything is ready. We will go far away from Thornfield and leave this nightmare behind. Where can we go? We can go to France and live together as man and wife. Nobody will know. You have no family. Nobody can stop us. Jane desperately wanted to stay with him, but she knew that it was impossible. No, I cannot do it. Why not? Tell me why. Because you already have a wife, and we can never forget that, no matter where we go. You cannot leave me, Jane. How can I live without you now? That night, Jane decided that she had to leave Thornfield immediately. I must go. It breaks my heart, but I cannot see him again. Early the next morning, she silently left her room. As she passed Rochester's door, she heard him walking restlessly up and down. Goodbye, Edward. I will love you until the day I die. For hours, she walked along the road, away from Thornfield. Then a coach passed, and she stopped it. I have 20 shillings. How far can you take me? Get in, miss. I'll tell you when you have to get off. Chapter 12. Jane Runs Away. Jane travelled on the coach for two days. It was a sad journey for her. I had to leave. I had no choice. Finally, the coach stopped in a village. Jane had no idea where she was. You have to get off here, miss. I can't take you any farther. She looked at the houses around her. I've got no money. I need to find work. She knocked at some of the doors. Excuse me, do you know anybody who needs a servant? No, not in this village. Is there any work I can do? I'll do anything. I'm sorry, miss. I've no idea. She was hungry. She went into a baker's shop. Please, can I buy some bread? I have no money, but I'll give you my gloves. Oh, no, miss. I can't do that. That night... She slept outside in the woods under a tree. Perhaps tomorrow I will have more luck. But the next day there was still no work and no money. She had to beg for food. Can you give me a crust of bread? I haven't eaten for two days. Here you are. You can take this. In the evening it started to rain. Now she was weak and ill. There is no way to go. Nobody will help me. In despair, she walked out of the village. There was a house with a light in the window. I'll go there. It's my last hope. When Jane knocked on the door, a servant appeared. What do you want? Please help me. I'm a stranger here. I need food and somewhere to sleep. You can't sleep here. How do we know who you are? Here, take this penny and go away. The servant closed the door. But Jane was now so weak that she fainted. Just then, a young man arrived. Diana, help me open the door. A young woman came out and helped him to carry Jane inside. Who is she? I don't know, but we can't leave her here to die on our doorstep. 
When Jane woke up, she was lying in a comfortable, warm bed. The young man was looking at her. Thank you for taking care of me. Who are you? I am St. John Rivers, the clergyman in the village. And this is my sister Diana. But what about you? How did you get into such a condition? Jane decided to keep her real identity secret. My name is Jane Elliot. I worked as a governess and was very happy. But then I had to leave. I cannot tell you why. Except to say that it wasn't my fault. Have you got no family or friends? No, I have nobody. Diana interrupted her brother. Leave her, St. John. She is still very weak. She can stay here with us for as long as she likes. Thank you. You are very kind. But I must also find some work that I can do. Perhaps I can help you to do that. Chapter 13 St. John Rivers Diana was very kind to Jane, and they soon became good friends. You look much better today, Jane. I am going for a walk in the woods. Would you like to come? Yes, I'd love to. They had the same interests. Reading, walking in the country, and drawing. I like your paintings. Where did you learn how to draw? I've never had lessons, but I've always enjoyed painting and drawing. St. John was different from his sister. He was very serious and intense. Jane liked him, but it was difficult to become his friend. He worked hard, visiting sick and poor people in his parish. Often he had to go out, even at night. Reverend Rivers, I'm sorry to disturb you at this time. Mrs. Thomas is very ill and she wants to see you. All right, I'll come straight away. He took a particular interest in Jane. There is a job that you can do, but I am afraid that you will not like it. I would be glad to do any work. Tell me what it is. I want to open a school for the girls in the village. Would you like to be their teacher? Yes, I would like that very much. <laughs> it will be hard work. They have never been to school before, and they can neither read nor write. I'm not afraid of hard work. So Jane became the village teacher and lived in a little house next to the school. The months passed. She was happy enough with her new life, but she often thought with sadness about Thornfield and Rochester. I wonder how Edward is, and Adele. I'll write to Mrs. Fairfax and find out what has happened at Thornfield. She wrote a letter, but there was no reply. St. John often came to visit Jane at the school. How are you getting on with the girls? Quite well. Some of them are making good progress. He spoke to her about his ambitions. Are you satisfied with your life here? I feel that there are more important things for me to do. I want to become a missionary. I intend to go to India to teach the word of God. Jane started to learn German with Diana. One day when she was studying, St. John interrupted her. Put away your German books, Jane. I want you to learn Hindustani with me. By teaching you, I can learn it better myself. It will be important for my work. He was a good teacher but his intensity and determination frightened her a little. There is something hard and cold about his character. I cannot relax when he is with me. One evening, he came to see her. Will you come for a walk with me? Yes, of course. They walked across the fields. Jane, in six weeks I am leaving for India. I want you to come with me and help me with my missionary work. She was shocked. No, St. John, don't ask me to do that. You must do it. I have watched you carefully during these months. I can see that God has chosen you to do this work. I want you to become my wife and come with me. As your wife? B 
But we do not love each other. How can we marry? What is love? Love will come later. God's work is more important than sentiment. Forgive me, Sinjin. I don't want to hurt you. I love you as a brother, but I could never marry you. Think carefully, Jane. It is God who is calling you. Chapter 14 Return to Thornfield When St. John left her, Jane was filled with doubts. I don't want to marry him, but perhaps he is right. Perhaps I should go with him. What have I got to lose? My life here is empty. Just then, she thought that she heard a voice calling her. Jane! Is that the wind? Jane! Jane! It's Edward. I am coming. Wait for me. She ran across the fields in the direction of the voice. But there was nobody there. Where are you? The next morning, she got up very early. I'm going back to Thornfield. I must find out what has happened. She told Diana her plan. I have to go away for some days. There is a friend who needs my help. Are you going alone? Yes. She took the coach back to Millcott. I'll walk the last few miles across the fields. She was excited as she came near her old home. I can't wait to see Thornfield again. Will Edward be there? It was a terrible shock when she finally saw the house. Oh no! The house has burned down. It's a ruin. Jane walked sadly to the village. Where is everyone? And what has happened to Edward? Is he dead? She went into the inn. The owner did not recognize her. I am looking for Mr. Edward Rochester of Thornfield Hall. He doesn't live here now, miss. There was a terrible fire at the hall last autumn and the house was burned down. How did it happen? Did you know that there was a mad woman living there? Well, it seems that she started it. One night, she went into one of the bedrooms, the governess's room, they say, and set fire to the bed. Soon, the whole house was burning. Was Mr. Rochester there? Oh, yes, and he was very brave. He got everybody safely out of the house. Except for the mad woman herself. She went up onto the roof. What did Mr. Rochester do? He tried to save her, too. He risked his life. But when he reached out his arms to her, she shouted and jumped off the roof. She was dead when they found her. Good God! Was anybody else killed? No, but poor Mr. Rochester. Some people say it would be better if he were dead. Jane's blood ran cold. Why? He's blind, miss. Completely blind. And he lost one of his hands in the fire. Part of the house fell on top of him when he came down from the roof. Where is he now? Do you know? At Ferndean Manor, about 30 miles from here. He lives there with just two old servants. They say he's a broken man now. Have you got a carriage that I can use? I want to go to Ferndean immediately. Chapter 15 The End Fern Dean Manor was a desolate, lonely house. When Jane knocked at the door, one of the old servants from Thornfield appeared. Mary, how are you? Miss Eyre, come in. How did you find us here? They went into the kitchen. I was just going to take this glass of water to Mr. Rochester. Let me take it to him. Jane was nervous as she entered the room and saw him sitting by the fire. His dog, Pilot, jumped up. Sit down, Pilot. Mary, is, is that you? Give me the water. He put out his hand and Jane held it. Who is that? Is it 
Possible? These fingers are hers. Jane, is it really you? Yes, Edward, it's me. I've come back to you. Oh, my darling Jane, I have searched for you for so long and could not find you. You must never leave me again. No, I never will. Look at me. Look at my eyes and my broken body. Do you still love me? How could you live with an ugly, blind old man like me? I love you now more than ever. Then will you marry me? I cannot live without you. Yes, Edward, I will. She took him outside into the garden. The strangest thing happened to me a few days ago. It was late in the evening and I was in despair. I thought you were dead. I called out your name. And then I heard your voice in the air. You said, I am coming. Wait for me. And then, where are you? How is this possible? Jane said nothing. She took his hand, and together they returned to the house. One morning, Rochester and Jane got married in a quiet ceremony at the local church. When Jane told the two old servants, they both smiled. Mr. Rochester and I got married this morning. Did you, miss? I didn't know you were going to church. I'm glad. We wish you every happiness. Jane took good care of her husband and they were very happy. You are my eyes, Jane. I see the world through you. Adele went to a school near Ferndean, and she spent the holidays with them. Rochester bought a little house for Mrs. Fairfax, and she often came to see them. Diana was a frequent visitor, too. After many months, a letter arrived from St. John. He has gone to India and is already hard at work, He's always so serious. I hope he does not try to do too much. One day, about two years after they were married, Edward looked at Jane and smiled. You are wearing a blue dress today. Yes. How do you know? For some time now, I have felt that my right eye is getting better. Little by little, his eyesight gradually improved. Now you do not need me to guide you everywhere you go. When their first child was born, he looked carefully at the baby's face. I can't believe it. I am sure he looks like me.